Today I'm going to be sharing five amazing jute sewing projects that you can make from jute fabric squares that you buy from the Dollar Tree. So let's get into project number one. So for this cute tote bag project, you're going to need two of the jute fabric squares from the Dollar Tree and some nautical rope. You can often find this nautical rope at the Dollar Tree and we're going to keep the jute squares the size that they are, but I cut down the nautical rope to 24 inches. All right, so the first thing we'll want to do is take our two jute fabrics and we're going to fold one edge of them down a half an inch. So it might turn out a little uneven because these fabric squares aren't really even and I'm not gonna try to cut it to get it to size because it's going to unravel if I do. So you can use a ruler to kind of be your guide to get it somewhat straight, but we're going to do a half an inch once and then twice to fold those, to, to hide the raw edges. So I'm gonna use it kind of as a guide just to get it a little bit straight. And then I can use the edge that we created to do the second fold. So we're just doing this on the short edge of one side of both of these squares. So get it prepped, get both of them prepped, and I'll show you what to do next. All right, so now that we have both of our jute squares folded under along one side on each of them, we're just going to top stitch along here to make sure it is tacked down and looks a little more you know, finished and professional. All right, so the next step is to add on the handle to the bag. And to do that, we're going to find the center of our bag, or at least something close to the center. And I'm gonna show you what the handle is going to look like attached. It is so cute. Now, you notice my stitches do stand out, so, and I do need to cut some loose thread still. But what I want to let you know is if you're not going fast like me and choose, a color of thread that matches your rope it will blend in a lot nicer so think about doing that but the handle it turned out so cute on this bag I'm really happy with it okay so we found the center of the bag and then you're going to take your rope and count over one two three inch markings and then kind of roll up your jute to place there so I'm gonna place it right at, on my ruler, it's the six mark, and I'm going to put a clip there to hold it. Now, it's not gonna be easy to hold it and stitch this, so you kind of wanna work fast. Your clips aren't going to want to hold on there, but it is so worth it. It's such a cute way to do a handle, and it's so actually so much quicker than making the handle yourself. So remember the center of our bag was nine. And so I'm gonna count over one, two, three, and then twist my rope a little bit, set it along there. And if it's not perfectly centered, so be it. Don't worry about it. It's fine. It's going to look so cute anyway. And the thing with these kind of projects is nobody's going to get really close and inspect it. They're gonna see you taking this somewhere to do some shopping at a market or take it to the beach or the pool. And all they're gonna think is that's a really cute bag. All right, so we're gonna take this over to the sewing machine. And what we're going to do is start at the top and I'm just gonna do a row of stitches back and forth right across it. 
and then go about an eighth of an inch away and keep doing that in rows until I get to the bottom of the rope circle. And that will really secure it in place really, really well. Like I said on mine, it's standing out a lot because I'm using a much lighter thread, but if you grab a tan or a cream thread, it'll blend in a lot better. Something else you could do is if your sewing machine has a zigzag stitch, you could kind of start at the center and zigzag around following it. That would look really cute too. I'm just gonna do these straight rows and it'll secure it in place really good. Alright, so now that you have the handle sewn on, this was the hardest step of the bag and it's going to come together so fast now. Now to hide these seams that would typically be on the inside of the bag, we are going to make some French seams on this bag. And so to do that, we're going to put the bag wrong sides together first. I know that isn't how you normally sew up things like this, but just trust me. All right, so we're going to this wrong sides together all the way around and I'm just going to clip it in place. So these may not be the same size. So just keep that in mind. Definitely a very different size that these panels are. So what we're going to do with this initial sew is try to sew right along the edge an eighth of an inch, but you're going to have to pay attention to any overlapping. So I can sew along one side and then it might make sense to flip the bag and sew along the side that I can see where the shortest size is. So just keep that in mind, but we're going to sew all the way around, leaving the top of the bag open. All right, so now we're going to cut off any noticeable excess jute. There are a couple areas that the squares didn't meet, meet up exactly, so I'm just gonna trim off any of the excess. It'll make our next step just that much easier. All right, so now that you have it trimmed, you're gonna flip the bag so the wrong side is facing out. Just kind of even out that seam. I like to roll my fingers along there. That'll make it easier to sew around. And then you're going to sew around the edge again, and this will kind of enclose all those first seams we sewn. So you're gonna sew around there. You might need to do a half an inch. You might need to do a full inch. Just kind of feel where you're seam is as you sew and that will really help you make sure you sew in all of those seams that we created. So now that we sewed all the way around the bag, it's time to flip it and see how it looks. So I had a few little jute rope strands that are sticking out. That's okay. We can just trim those off. And there we go. We have a finished tote bag that just cost $2 and a little bit more because we still have rope left to use for another project. So maybe... We could even say $3 for this tote bag, but still a little less because we can use the rest of the rope in a, another project. But I don't think that's that bad for a big 
tote bag like this and it's so cute each side is a little bit different and we hid all of the raw edges inside a great bag to bring to the pool or to the beach put some of the things you need in it and go or a great reusable shopping bag let me know in the comments if you're going to make one and what you would use it for so on to the next project now for the next project we're going to make a really cute placemat I love making placemats. It is a fun way to change the decor in your breakfast nook or in your dining room. So for this project, you'll need one of the jute fabric squares as well as one or two extra fat quarters from your stash. So flip it over to the back and I want my placemat to be about 12 inches by 18 inches. So I'm going to mark off 12 and it doesn't have to be exact see if I can even see this. All right, I'm gonna have to go strong here. So we're gonna mark off at 12 here and then a little bit over so that we can connect those lines. And we're going to draw the line all the way to 18 since I want my placemat to be 12 by 18. So, and I'm gonna come down and measure across 18 and draw a line. And now before I cut this, I'm gonna sew along each side of the line so that I can cut down it and not have the jute unravel too much on me before I complete this placemat. So I'm gonna sew about a quarter of an inch along either side of the line. All right, so now we're just gonna cut out along the line that we drew. All right, so I'm gonna set aside this extra piece of the jute because I'm gonna show you something else that can be done with the leftovers. All right, so now we have our jute that I want for the size of my placemat. So I'm gonna set this to the side because we have a little bit more prep that we need to do. I have a extra fat quarter here that I'm going to use as the back of my placemat. Now, you do not have to put a back on yours. I was just thinking that it would be nice to have this placemat be reversible if I ever want to change uh, the look. So, Instead of measuring again, I'm just gonna kind of cheat here and use the placemat as a guide. So I'm just gonna line it up and cut along here. All right, and so I'm gonna save this piece of fabric for another project. Set that to the side and now I want to put the fabric piece here wrong side up and I'm going to use a little bit of basting spray here. So I like the 505 and you can also pin if you don't have a basting spray already. So I'm just going to spray some on here. I should have put something down so I didn't ruin my cutting mat but we already did it so there's that and then just press. And then what I'm gonna do is take this to the sewing machine and I'm just gonna sew following some of these lines in a few random places just to make sure this holds together nicely. Like I said, you don't have to put a back on at all. Uh, you can just skip to the next step where we bind everything if you would like. But I'm gonna add a few stitches, random places through here just to hold everything together.
All right, so after trimming up our mat, see, it's so cute, double-sided. We're gonna grab our other fat quarter and we're going to cut a few binding strips from it. I like to cut my binding to 2.5 inches and just to make sure I have enough binding, I'm going to cut four strips. I'm gonna square up one side just to make sure it's nice and straight. And then I like to go ahead and trim off the salvage as well. All right, and then I'm going to cut four strips. All right, so I'm gonna set the rest of the fat quarter to the side for another project. So now I'm gonna take my binding strips and what we're going to do is sew them together end to end. The short sides we're going to sew together and you'll want to place them right sides together as you sew and have that seam. Press the seams open and press the binding strip in half lengthwise, wrong sides together. And then I'll show you how to add the binding onto the mat. All right, so here is how my binding looks. And you can see it is folded in half with wrong sides together. And the seam is nice and pressed open. So what we're going to do is first sew the binding onto the back of the mat. And I'm going to sew the binding so that the raw edge meets up with the edge of the mat. And where I start, I'm going to leave a long tail of the binding. And this is so that I can bring the binding together later. So I'm going to sew the binding in place. I'm gonna back stitch a lot where I start. And when I get to the corner, I'm going to leave my needle in the down position and angle the mat so I can sew to the edge at a 45 degree angle. Once I sew to the edge, I'm going to fold my binding up and then back down and start sewing again. And I'm going to do that at each corner, sewing the binding all the way around and then stopping again to leave a lot of distance between. Then I'll snip my binding so that there's just about a half of an inch overlap and then I'll sew the bindings together, press the seams open and sew it in place. All right, so let's get started. All right, so now that the binding is sewn in place to the back, we're going to flip it over to the front and start working around folding it down. So I love to use these wonder clips to hold it in place. All right, at the corners, you can fold that down and it should meet up nicely, making a nice mitered corner along your edges there. So just keep working around and clipping it in place. And then after you have it all clipped and everything lined up nicely, you can take it over to the sewing machine and top stitch along the edge of the binding. I like to top stitch at about an eighth of an inch away from the edge. And I like to lengthen my stitch on my sewing machine to just under three but do whatever top stitch length you like. All 
right, so there is the finished table mat. We just used one piece of jute, one piece of fat, a fat quarter for binding, and a piece of a fat quarter from the sash for the back, which is optional. But how cute is that reversed? You have a completely different look in that direction. So it's almost two placemats in one. If you choose to put the fat quarter on the back, this is about a $3 project, but you have leftover material from each piece that you can use on something else. It's just under $2 if you just want to do the fat quarter and the jute. And I'm giving that number because you can get five fat quarters from the Dollar Tree for five dollars so that makes the fat quarters about a dollar if you get them from there and can find them coordinating if you grab them from the stat your stash it's whatever you paid for it but one dollar for the jute so let's move on to the next project all right so for this next project we're going to be making a quick coaster now this project is so fun because after you make the placemats, you can just use those leftover fabrics to make as many coasters as you can. For this project, you're going to grab the leftover jute from your previous project. And we're going to cut a few squares from it. Now to do this, I'm going to first mark out the squares on the jute. And I'm gonna line up this diagonal line with one of my lines on the jute just to make sure I am saying nice and straight. So I want those jute lines to be on the diagonal still. So I'm gonna mark out my five inches and then I'm going to draw my square. All right, so just as before, I am going to sew a quarter inch seam along both sides of the square that I drew. So after cutting out your jute square, you're going to take a five inch piece of leftover fabric from another project and put it right sides together on that square. I'm gonna put a few clips in to hold it in place and I'm going to put double clips where I want to start and stop sewing because we're going to, um, you're going to leave a little bit of an opening so you can flip this project right sides out. I always need to give myself a little reminder or I will just forget that I'm sewing and keep going forever and ever and close it up all the way. So I'm just going to uh, start sewing here, start sewing, back stitch really well, Go all the way around with a quarter inch seam, sew and back stitch really well. Then we'll flip this right sides out and press the seams into the center of this project and top stitch an eighth of an inch all the way around. That'll finish up this quick project.
All right, and just like that, we have another jute project finished, a cute little coaster. You could make these with just scraps of jute and and scraps of your leftover fabric in no time at all. How cute is this? Let me know in the comments which project you are liking best so far and if you're going to try any of them. All right, let's move on to the next project. All right, so for the next project, we're going to be making a nice oversized basket. This basket will be a great way to organize any of the extras laying around your craft room or your home. And for this project, you're just going to need one of those jute fabric squares from the Dollar Tree and a scrap of fabric that is a 10 inch square. So to make this cute little basket, we're going to do a little bit of prep work. First, you're going to want to cut some binding strips out of this 10 inch square. So I'm going to cut two and a half inches and I'm gonna cut four strips. All right, so I'm gonna, cut, I'm gonna prep this binding by sewing two together sewing a quarter inch seam and pressing it open and pressing the binding uh, wrong sides together. And we're gonna have two binding strips that look like that. And then for my jute, I'm going to sew an eighth of an inch around it and then a quarter of an inch around it so that I can trim it up and not have it unravel as much like it is now. Alright, so now we have the binding across both of the short sides of our jute fabric. So now we're going to bring it right sides together, lining up the binding, and put a few clips in to hold the sides in place, and you're going to sew about a half an inch seam along both sides of this project. So, so right along the sides. If you want to try to match up the quarter inch line of stitches, you could do that as well. Um, but I'm going to do a half an inch just to have a bunch of little lines of thread here to keep the jute from unraveling too much. All right, so now we're going to box the corners of this project and that will give us that basket look. So you're going to fold in half here, lining up the seam along the side, get it nice and straight. And then we're going to mark two inches up from the point of that, of the bottom of the bag, lining up along the seam. And I'm going to draw a line here that we're going to sew along. I'm gonna put some clips so it stays nice and even when we head over to the sewing machine and then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Now when I sew along this marked line, I'm going to also move 
and so again so that I can keep the jute from unraveling. Now, keep in mind, I'm marking this with a permanent marker because I couldn't find anything that would stay on the jute that I could see. So that's going to show up in the bottom of my basket because I can't take it away. So if you don't want to have a marked line like that on your finished project on the inside, you're just going to have to think of another way that you could mark along here. And if you do think of another way, please let us all know in the comments because I couldn't find anything that would mark up on this jute very well. So I'm going to sew along my drawn line and then I'm going to go in an eighth of an inch and sew another line of stitching and then again an eighth of an inch away from there to help the jute not unravel as much. After I do that, I'm going to flip this bag right side out and we'll take a look at this basket all finished up. All right, so we're going to trim about a quarter of an inch away from the stitched line. And then let's take a look at our basket. All right, so there is the finished basket. It is so cute with the B print. And what I thought I was going to do with my basket was I've been keeping this box on my cutting and pressing area with all these scraps that I collect from different projects. And I thought that having something cute like this would be a fun place to keep all of my scraps. And it honestly will look a lot better than this box sitting around here. What do you think? Now I can recycle this box and use my cute little jute basket for all of my scraps. I might need to make another one actually because this one's pretty much full. What do you think of this basket idea and what would you put in yours? All right, so let's move on to our next project. All right, so for the next jute project, we are going to be making a cute table topper. Now for this project, you'll just need one of the jute fabric squares and some lace. All right, so for this project, we're going to change this jute square into a cute table topper. So I'm gonna flip it to the wrong side and I'm going to make this a circular shape. And I always grab something that's a circle to get started with, but I don't want it to be this small. I wanna kind of get as big as I can out of this square. So what I'm going to do is use this kind of as a guide and then trace around here. And I'm going in a little bit because this, so I'm just gonna go back. And this is going to be the back of the project anyway, but you can see how I'm just using it to kind of keep a circular shape because there's no way I could draw a circle on my own. <laughs> At least not this large. And then, you guessed it, we're going to sew some stitches around the marked line to keep the jute from unraveling. So I think that's not too bad for a circle. All right, so I'm going to sew around the marked line to keep the jute from unraveling. And then I'll cut out the circle. And then all we're going to do to finish off this cute table topper project is add some lace around the edge after it's cut out.
so here is the absolutely adorable table topper. I am so happy with how it turned out. It is so cute. It took a little longer to do the lace than I initially thought it would. I thought this would be probably one of the quickest projects, but because I did the pleating, is that what it's called? Pleating to make the ruffle? Let me know in the comments what it's called. But because I did that, it took a little bit longer, but I think it was worth it. If you want this project to go a little quicker, just lay the lace flat and sew around. All right, so that is another project finished. I hope you enjoyed all of these jute sewing projects. Let me know in the comments which project you like the best. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.